Greetings, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Now, recently, FDA regulators have been zeroing in on processes which add caffeine to food and drinks, which could lead to further restrictions on caffeine in general. I think this time the FDA has gone entirely way too far. Now, as an addict, um, I don't think I'm using that word properly. As an enthusiast of caffeine and coffee, I will not stand for this nonsense. I am a purist and believe that energy drinks can't replace just a really good cup of coffee. Energy drinks bastardize the good name of coffee and sully the reputation of the rich, dark, delicious bean that rejuvenates the mind, body, and soul. So I say go ahead and put your sanctions on energy drink, but you leave my pure black Jamaican bright cup of happiness alone. Does the FDA not see the backlash this caffeine regulation will cause? What will art school grads do if they can't open up avant-garde coffee shops? Where will entitled hipsters hang out and mock regular humans? Where will the pansies that like sweet lattes and the most extreme of folk who enjoy a dark black cup of coffee with no cream and no sugar meet and realize despite our differences, we are still brothers and sisters? Consider one of the most frightening consequences of a government-imposed caffeine ban? Office homicides. Now imagine a world where one businessman punches out another and chokes him out with his own Macy's brand tie. As the number of office homicides increase, we're going to start seeing caffeine checkpoints. There's now going to be specialty breathalyzers hitting the market to detect caffeine in your bloodstream. This would of course spur to leading myths of eating an onion or licking a tea bag to trick that breathalyzer. Some of the tests would include how fast you finish a game of Sudoku and if your hand is twitching faster than a hummingbird's wings. People found guilty of a caffeine overdose would have to begin JA or Java Anonymous. Now you can spot these people with their slow reaction time, dark circles under their eyes, irritability, and a general loss of bliss. Now getting rid of caffeine will probably just turn us into zombies, or worse yet, Mormons. Do we really want to turn into a nation that believes that Jesus had a passport to come over to America and walk around in Utah, camp out there for a while, and bury some gold plates? Are we really going to believe this sort of thing would happen? Once you start regulating caffeine, we're going to start losing concentration, and the next thing you know, we're just going to be sipping tea like a bunch of British pricks. Is that what the FDA wants? For us to be British? Maybe this is a British plot. They've infiltrated the FDA to get revenge on what you white bastards did by dropping all that tea into that harbor. I, that wasn't me, guys. I'm not, I am not. wasn't a part of that plot. You leave me out of this and your caffeine ban. Look, other than a few instances of irregular heartbeat and dangerously increased blood pressure, coffee has done no bad to anybody. In fact, some of the greatest minds in the world have drank many a cup of coffee to come up with some of the great theories that we all know and love. Minds like Andre de Balzac, Voltaire, the Dyson vacuum guy. You know who hated coffee? King Henry, Caesar, Hitler, the guy that decided to bring the fiat back to the US. Now FDA, I ask you, do you want to stand with these evildoers or do you want to stand with these pillars of society that have always drank the sweet, rich, dark mother that flows through my veins that we have lovingly named caffeine? The answer to that should be your standing with the pillars of society. That's all for today's Forks Full of Noodles. Thank you for listening. You can check everything out that we do at ramennoodlescomedy.com. Be sure to support our friends at TouchFaster who help produce this show. Follow us on Twitter at KrishMohanHaha and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Thank you again and we'll see you next time.